Hey y'all, let's take a look at word per, uh, there's that word again. Just a terrible word. It sounds so negative. That's why we decided to call it word happy fun puzzles. Much better that way. Okay, let's do a couple of these. You know, ratios are just fractions. You set them equal to each other and then you're ready to go and solve. And on these, the question is going to be, you're going to need to create three ratios and then figure out which one to use and then you know, do a fraction equals a fraction and solve it and you're done. Let's look at one for example. The ratio of M&Ms to Skittles in Ed's hand was 2 to 17. If there were 380 total pieces in his hand, how many were M&Ms? Okay, well very quickly, you've got the ratio of M&Ms to Skittles was 2 to 17. So let's just go, you know, M&Ms to Skittles, the entire thing is 2 to 7. Oops, that's a 2 and 17. In other words, for every Two M&Ms he has, he has 17 Skittles. Now, it's possible, if we didn't know he had 380 pieces, that he could just have 19 pieces of candy in his hand, right? I mean, he'd have two M&Ms, 17 Skittles, you look at it, yep, let's see, two to 17 is my ratio, I have 19 pieces of candy. But he doesn't. He has 380 total pieces of candy. How many were M&Ms? You're gonna have to create a ratio. Let's go ahead and create all three ratios and then choose the best one to make our equation, okay? So if he has two to 17 or M&Ms to Skittles, then I have another two questions for you. What is the ratio of M&Ms to total? In other words, in his hand, if he's looking down and he has two to 17, well, he has two, two M&Ms, right? The total would be two plus 17, right? Okay, the other one would be Skittles to total, and that would be what to 19? 17, right? Okay. They tell you that there were 380 total. So we know we're going to use this, this one or this one because it has a total. And how many were M&Ms? Which means we're going to use this one here because we're looking for a ratio that has to do with M&Ms and total. So we're already halfway there. We just take this one and we go, okay, M&Ms to total. And you don't have to write this part right there. It's just a kind of guide. That's going to be 2 to 19, which equals... 380, that's the actual number he has in his hand. How many were M&Ms? We don't know. Boom, there you go. And this is your setup. And all you need to do now is just cross multiply uh, to solve what M is. Now, by the way, you might look at this and go, wait, 19 times what gives me 380? Well, 19 times 2 gives you 38. So 19 times 20 gives you this. So 2 times 20 would give you 40. So there are 40 M&Ms. If you didn't see that, fine. Take 19 and multiply it by M, and then take 2 and multiply it by 380, that's 760. If you need to use a calculator, just for speed, go ahead and divide 19 into 760, and there you go, there is your solution. Okay, here's another one. It took 600 kilograms of sulfur to make 3,000 kilograms of a new compound. How many kilograms of other materials would be required to make 4,000 kilograms of the new compound? Okay. Well, in other words, it took 600 sulfur to make 3,000. Okay, so in other words, 600, that's sulfur, and then of three, to make 3,000. They're not asking, though, about sulfur. They're not asking, how many kilograms of sulfur would be? No, they're asking other materials. So we're going to have to look at this uh, ratio and go, okay, if there's 600 kilograms of sulfur in this, well, what's left over of other? Well, you still have 3,000 total. Well, 3,000 minus 600 is 2,400. So that's the other to the total, right? So that's going to be 2,400 of other stuff in there to make 3,000, all right? Their question is, how many kilograms of other stuff? Which means it's going to match up with this part right here, because we don't know how much other would be required to make 4,000. So... In other words, if it took 2,400 to make 3,000, how much would it take to make 4,000? And that's your whole setup. And you can do, if you want to make this a lot easier on yourself, you can just chop off those zeros. In fact, you can take 24 over 30 and chunk the whole th thing into uh, a very much reduced fraction, which is just four-fifths. So, boom, gone, all right? So in other words, you have this. Four-fifths equals x over 4,000, all right? And you can just go, go ahead and do the cross-multiplying. 5x equals 4 times 4,000. That's 4 times 4 with three zeros. And then you can do the, if you want to do, you know, the K 
calculator deal, you can do that, but the X is gonna be 3,200, and there you go. And again, you're looking at this and going, okay, it take, took 600 to make 3,000. Oh, but they're not asking us about the 600. They're asking us of the other one. Okay, well, by the way, what you could have also done, you could have done uh, 600 to three, you know what, skip that one, we'll just do it this way. But you, what you're trying to figure out is what's left over, you found out it was 2,400. 2,400 to the entire amount equals what? To this new entire amount, and boom, you got it. So, okay, well, let's look very quickly at geometry. And you don't have to copy this down, but just look at this. This is a set of what's called similar triangles, all right? And notice, like if you had to explain to somebody what you think the definition of similar triangles is based on these two drawings, what would you say? I mean, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're the same setup, but kind of one's bigger than the other. And that's exactly right. Now, if you notice the tick marks on the angles, this one matches this one. This one here matches this one, and this one matches this one. Now, the official definition of similar triangles is basically two triangles that have all three angles the same. And you can see that just because the angles are the same, that doesn't mean the side lengths are going to be the same. Okay, because you, because you can have an, uh, an angle open up. You can keep extending this. You can make this twice as big if you wanted to. But here is what happens with similar triangles because the angles being the same. What happens is, look at the side ratios. Look at the three and then look at the six. Okay, then the five and the 10, then the seven and the 14. Obviously what's happening, it's double, right? There is a nice exact ratio. So in other words, you could look at this anytime you see two similar triangles and you can make ratios if you want to out of the sides. In other words, remember what we used to do with those transversals and we kind of went like this and this and we went like that and then there's another one like this, you know? And this was like, you know, five, or, uh, let's see, next make two of them, forget that. Let's say this was five and this was 10. You could go, oh, this was three. What is this one right here? And you looked at this and you went, okay, that's like a fraction. Five tenths is equal to three over X. And you went, oh, that's three over six. They're both half. It's exactly what you can do here. So you can set up ratios if you want. And by the way, as long as you're consistent, it's okay. You can do a couple of different methods. In other words, you could go like this. You could say, okay, three fifths, is equal to, in other words, left side over right side is equal to left side of this one over the right side. And that's a true, you know, if you cross multiply, that's 30, three times 10, and this is also 30. You could also do this, three to six. You see where I got that? Three to six, the left one on that one to the left one on that one equals five over 10, right? equals the right one over that one. You could go the seven over the 14 equals the three over the six. As long as you're consistent, you'll be fine, okay? So there are a couple of ways to do this. Let's actually do a couple of these really quickly. Okay, find X and Y. And if you want, you can copy these down, pause and copy, you don't have to, but um, let's take a look at X first. And again, all you're looking at, you're just gonna make fractions out of these. That's all you're gonna do. So you could do, you know, you're just picking sides that stick together in a certain way. In other words, you could pick four to five, which means you took the left to the bottom. That equals, let's go over here and do the other one, left to the bottom, three to X. That's one way you could do it. You could also look at this and go uh, four to three, four to three, the left to the left equals, if we're gonna do X, equals five to X. Either, any, either one of these is fine, as long as you're very consistent. But let's just go ahead and stick with this one since that's what we started with. All right, we'll cross multiply. Four times X is equal to five times three. And you can just leave it, you know, X is equal to 15 over four. There you go, okay. Well, let's find Y, okay. Let's, which one would you use for Y? Give me, a, give me a setup that would work for Y. Something to something equals something to something. What do you think? I mean, you know, you could go four to seven equals three to y. That'd be okay. Four to seven is equal to three over y. Of course, you could also go four to three is equal to seven over y. Same thing, doesn't matter. But let's go ahead and just do this since we have it. Four times y is four y. Seven times three is 73. No, I'm just kidding, it's 21. Just 
wanted to get some kind of a jolt there in case you'd fallen asleep or something. All right, y is equal to 21 over 4, and that is it. We are done. That's similar triangles. That's all you need to do. Okay. All right, pause it and try A. Let's see what you get. All right, the ratio of malefactors to good guys was 3 to 11. Well, let's just stick it over here. Malefactors to good guys, 3 to 11. This is where you need to create two more uh, ratios. So malefactors to total is going to be 3 to 14. And good guys to total is equal to 11 to 14, right? Okay. They're asking 350 were investigated, so that's the total, so we don't need this one anymore. How many were malefactors? So we want a total and a malefactor, that's the one we're using right there. So you don't even have to think about this at all. You're just gonna copy this on down just like it already is, all right? So malefactors to total. Well, 350 were investigated, that's the total. That goes right here. How many were malefactors? Yoink, there we go. And we just cross multiply, right? 14 times M, 14M. Three times 100, or excuse me, 350 is 1,050. And then divide by 14. If you want to use a calculator to save yourself time, that's fine. The answer is 75 malefactors. Ooh, okay. All right, good enough. Try B. Go ahead and pause it and see what you get. All right, it took 800 to make 4,000. Let's just stick that up here. 800 to make 4,000, and that's the sulfur part. How many kilograms of other materials? Okay, so let's forget this. And let's not talk about sulfur anymore. We know we have a ratio, 4,000. If we have 800 kilograms of sulfur, it's gonna stink, for one thing, okay? Then we have 3,200 of other materials because 4,000 minus 800 is that, all right? So let's make ourselves a ratio. How many kilograms of other material, we don't know, call it X, would be required to make 5,000? There you go. Okay. Okay. Well, look, we can just, and again, if you want to make this easy on yourself, just chop off the zeros. And in fact, you can look at this probably and see 32 over 40 is four fifths, but don't worry about it. Um, let's just do the cross multiplying then. I have 40 times X equals 32 times 5,000. Good heavens. Okay. So let's, let's see. 32 times five is 160 and then thousand. All right. Well, chop off a zero, chop off a zero. 4x equals 16000, and that's going to be 4,000. There we go. And of course, you can use a calculator if you want to for this as well. So, okay. Make sense? Great. I'm assuming you said great. If not, rewind this about 10 more seconds and like keep watching it until somehow it makes sense. Okay. You'll do for one of these. All right. Uh, give it a pause there and try C. Okay, well, let's find A first. And again, you choose as long as you're consistent. You could go 4 to 5 is 9 to A. And it could look like this. 4 to 5 is 9 to A. If you didn't see that, that's fine. You could have said left to left is right to right. In other words, how about 4 to 9 is 5 to A. And either one of those will be fine. doesn't matter. So there you go. I'll just choose the bottom one since it's sitting at the bottom. 4 times A is 4A. 9 times 5 is 95. No, it's not. It's 45. Okay, divide by 4, and the answer is 45 over 4. They might have like 11.25 or something like that as your answer in the book. All right, let's try B. And again, you can, uh, you know, you can do this however you want. You can look at this and go, oh, there's a fraction right there. Oh, that equals this fraction right there. So you could go 4 to 6 equals 9 to uh, B. That's okay. Of course, you could also say, I'm going to go left to left. That equals bottom to bottom. Or you could, so that's going to be 4 out of 9 equals uh, 6 over B. Well, let's try each one of them. Um, good night. I messed up. Let's see. 4 or 6 is... Oh, that's B. Okay. So I got 4 times B here. That equals 6 times 9, or 54. So chop that uh, into four, and then we have 54 over four. We can knock that down one and make it 27 over two because both of those are even numbers, okay? Same thing here, four times B is four B, and then that's gonna equal nine times six, and it's all the same thing, so boom, there you go. Okay, all right, 
hope that went well. You guys take it easy. Have a great rest of the day and see you next time.